Pastor Zillinger's Daily Devotions. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Book of Concord, from the Apology or the Defense of the Augsburg Confession, um, Part 4 on Justification, Paragraph 75-81. through 81. That we obtain remission of sins by faith alone in Christ. 75. We think that even the adversaries acknowledge that in justification, the remission of sins is necessary first, for we are all under sin. Wherefore, we reason thus, to attain the remission of sins is to be justified, according to Psalm 32.1. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. By faith alone in Christ, not through love, not because of love or works, do we acquire the remission of sins, although love follows faith. Therefore, by faith alone we are justified understanding justification as the making of a righteous man out of an unrighteous, and that he be regenerated. It will thus become easy to declare the minor premise that we obtain forgiveness of sin by faith, not by love. If we know how the remission of sin occurs, the adversaries will great, with great indifference dispute whether the remission of sins and the infusion of grace are the same change, whether they are one change or two. Being idle men, they did not know what to answer, cannot speak at all on the subject. In the remission of sins... The terrors of sin and of eternal death in the heart must be overcome, as St. Paul testifies. 1 Corinthians 15, 56 The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That is, sin terrifies consciousness. That This occurs through the law, which shows the wrath of God against sin. But we gain the victory through Christ. How? By faith when we comfort ourselves by confidence in the mercy promised for Christ's sake. Thus, therefore, we prove the minor proposition. The wrath of God cannot be appeased if we set against it our own works, because Christ has been set forth as a propitiator, so that for his sake the Father may become reconciled to us. Christ is not apprehended as a mediator except by faith. Therefore, by faith alone, we obtain remission of sins, when we comfort our hearts with confidence in the mercy promised for Christ's sake. Likewise, Paul in Romans 5.2 says, by whom also we have access, and adds, by faith. Thus, therefore, we are reconciled to the Father and receive remission of sins when we are comforted with confidence in the mercy promised for Christ's sake. The adversaries regard Christ as a mediator and propitiator for this reason, namely, that he has merited the habit of love. They do not urge us to use him now as mediator, but as though Christ were altogether buried, they imagine that we have access through our own works, and through these merit this habit, and afterwards by this love come to God. Is not this to bury Christ altogether, or to take away the entire doctrine of faith? Paul, on the contrary, teaches that we have access, i.e. reconciliation, through Christ, and to show how this occurs. He adds that we have access by faith. By faith, therefore, for Christ's sake, we receive remission of sins. We cannot set our own love, our own works, over against God's wrath. Looking at this section, it's important to note, because really what they're arguing is kind of a cart and a horse issue. Um, At the time, it was this thing of, well, you can have your sins forgiven if you love. So if you do something, if you help your neighbor, if you love the church, if you do what the church says, something like that, then you can have your sins forgiven. You can have justification. Now, I, I thought that's an important point that if you equate those two things, you are justified when you are forgiven of your sins. When you are forgiven of your sins, you are justified before God. That is a super important method, uh, method and link. That we have as Lutheran Christians, that's why we are so closely linked to the sacraments, because there's forgiveness of sins. So if Jesus said, go baptize and there in baptizing forgiveness of sins will be there is justification and salvation. Of course, we want to do that. Now, it's not a works righteousness kind of issue. Like if I do it more than I get more cookies. No, it's about this is important to us, forgiveness of sins. So that's why when you go to a Lutheran church, we're not going to be talking about third use of the law a lot. Like this is what you need to do. You need to love more. You need to have all these things that you have on a list, and then you can please God. No, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about forgiveness of sins in Christ, and how does that get to us? And we trust it. That's what faith is. And I think that's important in this section and in other sections as well. Faith is not a work. Faith is kind of a passive thing. It's not something we actively do, like I have a little bit of faith or a lot of faith or most of faith. It's a, I trust Jesus and what he did and what he says. I trust him. I can't do it on my own. 
I can never do it on my own. I trust what is said to it. Therefore, I'm safe because Christ has done it all. He's the mediator. He's the propitiator. So just be aware of this. This is really what being a Lutheran and a Christian is altogether because what happens when you break this apart if you break apart forgiveness of sins and justification, if you break apart um, salvation and how we trust in Christ and say it's about us or it's about how we love or it's about how we do things, we go down the work. Uh, the path of works righteousness. We go to the Pharisees. We go to Roman Catholic Catholicism with things like this. We go to the Reformed. It doesn't matter. It becomes a works righteousness because the cart, the horse again. The horse has to be Christ. He has to be the one in front. The cart follows. And I like that statement. Faith and faith of uh, love will follow. It happens. It automatically happens. We don't really need to worry so much about it because if we trust Christ, we're regenerate and we want to do it. It's an it's a natural thing that happens. So just be aware that this is what it means to be a Christian. And in fact, how, why we're different or why maybe we even argue with other uh, denominations and things to say, this is what we want to center on because it's so important. The Lord bless your day as well as your week.